Okay, so let's get started. So I just want to welcome those who have just joined us. And today's quick learn is going to be how to purchase, create a purchase order from an existing sales order on version 29.2. So this is the agenda for today. So we're going to start by introducing the session and the benefits of generating purchase orders from sales orders. I will then demonstrate how to create generate a purchase order from that sales order. There's two ways of doing it. So I will show you both ways. And then as well, if we've got time at the end, I just want to show you how you can customize your fields on your purchase orders and sales orders. At the end of the demonstration, I will then summarise the session and then I'll talk about upcoming webinars as well. But please do keep your questions coming throughout the session so either me, Jackie or Michael can pick those up. So starting with this, this feature, so creating purchase orders from sales orders. So this feature was highly requested on Sage City by many of Sage 50 accounts users. So I will show you how you can submit your ideas towards the end of the session. So automating the process of generating purchase orders from sales orders can save time and reduce manual data entry errors. This streamlines the procurement process and helps users work more efficiently. So it reduces human error in quantity and pricing. It improves relationships with suppliers and it enhances customer satisfaction by filling, fulfilling orders promptly. Please note this option is only available on professional and that's a professional variant of the software and you've got to be on version 29.2. If you do not see this option that I am demonstrating today it's either going to be you're not going to be on the right variant so you might be on standard or essentials it could be that you're not on version 29.2 and you could be on version just version 29.0 or below or it could be down to your level of access so that may need, be, may need to be upgraded by the manager user but what i'm going to do now is i'm going to pop straight over to my software and we'll have a look at this option in action Okay, so we're going to start by just generating a new sales order. So I'm going to go into sales orders down the left hand side here. And I'm going to go into new. So in here, we're going to select a customer. I'm just going to go for A1 Design Services. I'm going to choose a product that I want on my sales order. So let's just go for the whiteboard. I'm going to go for, let's have a look. I'm going to go for an envelope. And I'm going to go for, I think we've got a flip chart as well. Okay, so I'm just going to leave my quantity as, as one for each of those items. I then have the option to generate the PO in the option along the top of the toolbar. So if I click on generate PO, it's going to ask me if I want to save the sales order. So I'm just going to click yes. And then you get this new window. So create a purchase order from your sales order. So as you can see, it's got the product codes listed down the side with your description. It's got your quantity in stock, so you can see what you've already currently got. So at the minute, my whiteboard, I've got five in stock and I've got five free, so not allocated to anything. And what this, we've got this blue icon here, this information. So this means that I've actually got an, a sufficient amount of stock to actually fulfill the sales order. So I don't necessarily need to place a purchase order for that item. So what I can do is if I don't want to include it in the purchase order order, I can just untick it. And that will then not create a purchase order for that item. If we scroll along as well, we've got some more columns here. 
So as you can see here, you've got the reorder level, the reorder quantity, the sum of sales orders, the quantity to order. You can amend this if you want to order more than what is on the sales order. But please be aware, the information that is on here, so what is quantity of one, this will only generate what is actually on the purchase order and not necessarily what your reorder quantity is. So you can see the reorder quantity for these items is 2, 40 and 20, but it's actually only ordering what is on the sales order. So, but you can, like you say, you can change that if you wanted to. So if you wanted to change that to five, you could change that to five. You've also got the cost price. You've also got the suppliers as well. So you can actually change these suppliers in here. If we scroll a little bit further. You've also got the PO delivery address as well. So if you click on this drop down, you've got the option for your company address your supplier address and now also as well you've got the option if a delivery address was added to the sales order it can then be sent directly to your customer so you would select that if that's what you wanted but you can choose company or supplier as well you've also got the option to add in a PO due date if that's required but this again this is optional you've also got the option to print the list or export now exporting all that does is it pushes exactly that screen like the table into excel for you and you can save this if it needs to be before clicking to create the purchase order in the bottom left there's a tick box here and what that means is that it's going to place the purchase order on order when you click create purchase order but this does need to be ticked every time. So once you tick it once and click create purchase order, it doesn't apply it to every single one you do. You have to tick that every time. So if I click create purchase orders, it said there one purchase order has successfully been created. Products included purchase order have been removed from the list. So as you can see, because we unticked that one, we no longer need it. That's why that one still remains in the list but it's create the purchase order for the other two. So if I click view or edit create purchase order, that's going to open that purchase order for me. So then again, you can come in here and make changes if needs be. But if you're happy, you can click save. Again, do you want to place an order now or later? I'm just going to put later. You can also view it as well. So if we close all of these out, close out of that you can also view it from the purchase orders list as well so you can see there there's my purchase order in the list you can also create purchase orders from within just the sales order list so if I was to pick let's just say uh, two of these you've actually got the option along of the Mod, the sales order module you've got a, another button exactly the same does exactly the same thing but instead of just creating it from a new PO you can choose existing POs from the list generate a PO so you can see my list is quite extensive for this one because it's from two sales orders again you can see I've got the the eyes telling me that I can I've actually got enough stock for this order for all for these orders again you can untick the ones you don't need But if I was to then click create from the ones I've got ticked, it's then created four purchase orders for me. So if I click view or create, uh, edit created, what you can actually do is when you click on that, if you've got multiple purchase orders, the first time round I did it, I only had the one. This time I've now got four. You can see I've got record one of four. So because I've gone in from the, the view from the purchase order window, I can actually flick through the different purchase orders by using the arrows along the bottom of the screen. If I'm happy with those, I can just click close and then close again. 
And if I pop into purchase orders, you can then see at the very bottom, I've got those four purchase orders there as well. Another thing you can also add in to your purchase orders and sales orders. We've mentioned this a couple of times on various sessions, uh, for, especially for custom, custom fields. You can also do this as well. So I'll just show you how you can add custom fields where they show. So if you pop into settings along the top and then into configuration. Then if we pop into custom fields, down the right hand side, you've got three custom fields or analysis fields that you can add to your sales orders or purchase orders, which can then be mapped to your layouts. So if I just change this to test, the same on purchases as well. I'll call that one test one. If I click OK, then if I pop into Sorry, sales order. In the order tab down the left hand side, you can see there it's renamed that in there. So then you can put in whatever is required. So you might want to put that as uh, instead of test, you could put region, and then you might be want to have your sales orders by regions. So then you can map these to your layouts as well. And it's the same for purchase orders, it's in the same place. So we pop into purchase orders. And then down to order down the left hand side. And then you can see there test one. If you did want support on this process in terms of generating purchase orders from sales orders, you can pop in to the help center. So in version 29, we've got the help option. And what we can do is we can just, you can see it brings up relevant information here. Just type in here, generate purchase order from sales. Hopefully it won't take too long to find the article. Just trying to find it in the help center. Bear with me, it's taken a little bit longer than expected. There we go. Okay, so if you type in generate purchase order from sales order, we've got an article there that gives you exactly the steps we follow today. It's even got screenshots as well and tells you all about how to use this feature. It tells you all the information right to the bottom. And it gives you little notes as well and little tips as well. OK, so that is the how to generate a purchase order from a sales order. Very simple, very quick, and it should save you more time in being able to, to generate it from a sales order rather than duplicating the work. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to show you the upcoming sessions that we've got coming up on our help centre. So I'm just going to pop to my home screen. And if you're in version 29, you've got the tile here for free webinars. And we've also got as well, I just want to show you before we move on to upcoming webinars, is the roadmap. So this is what I was talking about earlier, where you can submit your feedback or features you would like to see in the software. So you click on roadmap, brings you to this page here. So here you can see uh, delivered, so what's already been delivered, what is launching soon and what we're looking to do in the future. If you want to submit an idea, under have your say, click submit an idea or vote. So as you can see here, you've got all the different ones that people have voted on. So you can see here, this one's got 274 votes. So you can go all the way through and just see the different, 
the different ideas. If you want to add one, you can click on this new idea option here. Again, you can, like I say, you can vote on other people's as well. You may need to log in for this to uh, be able to vote, but in here you can submit your idea. I'll just quickly show you the webinars as well. So what we've got coming up. So I'm just going to open this one up. So if you click on that tile, it will take you straight to our registration page. So in here, you can view previous recordings so sessions that we've done in the past. You can come back and revisit as many times as you'd like. So what we've got coming up over the next couple of weeks. So we are still doing the bank feeds of version 29.2. Tomorrow, we've got customer corrections at 2 p.m. We're also doing management reports, so trial balance, profit and loss and balance sheet. We've got clear order trail, sales orders shortfall, correcting journals, departments and so forth. If you have checked our recordings page and you've also checked out the upcoming sessions, but you see a topic that you haven't yet seen, but you would like to see us cover, we have the option to suggest a new topic as well. So this is another way you can get your ideas across to us for topics you'd like to see us cover on the webinars. OK. So that does bring us to the end of today's session. It has been a short one. It is a small feature, but please feel free to stay around for the next couple of minutes or so. If you are waiting for an answer to a question or if you want to get your questions across now, please do so. If you've got what you need today and you want to leave the session, you will receive an email in around an hour or so with links to both our webinar schedule and today's recorded session for you to refer back to if needs be. Upon exiting the session, you will see a survey at the end. If you could let us know any feedback on the session, you can pop a little comment in there. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop myself on mute for a couple of minutes or so just to see if there's any other questions that do come through. It has been quite a quiet one on the session. So please do pop them across and I'll be back with you shortly. OK, so no more questions have come through. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wrap this session up. I want to say thank you to Jackie and Michael, who's been on hand today to answer your questions. And I want to say thank you to you all for your participation. And just a reminder, we have got plenty of sessions over the next couple of weeks. So don't be shy and get registered. So I want to say another thank you and take care. <laughs>